my father is my hero, and he's 91 years old. He was a pilot for 65 years, and he's got 23,000 hours. So that was my inspiration to be a pilot. I watched him do, and I fell in love with myself. It was uh, it was a purely natural instinct. It wasn't forced on me at all. My dad was actually giving me some flight instruction in airplanes, and about 100 hours later, I got a chance to fly in a helicopter from a friend of mine that had one. And when I went in the helicopter, uh, I just fell in love with it. So uh, I, you know, my dad wasn't too happy with that, but uh, <laughs> but that's why I got in the helicopters because I just absolutely fell in love with that 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 magic carpet feeling I can I get out of it. The aerobatics part was uh, something I kind of stumbled into. I I uh, um, was asked by Red Bull if I would do uh, an aerobatic routine in a helicopter, and I said no. I said that's too dangerous. <laughs> And uh, after talking to the uh, owner of the company at Red Bull, he, can, uh, he said, Chuck, just think about it for a while. And if there's any, any way you can make that happen, no matter what you have to do, think about it and, if, is any, uh, and then call me if there's any way we can put this together. So it took a couple of weeks and I thought about it for a while and, and realized that this helicopter behind me had the possibilities of doing it if we were to modify it. So I told him that, and he said, well, just make it happen. I don't care what it costs, make it happen. You know, Red Bull is the tops, and let's, let's stay on the leading edge of everything. And uh, if you can make it happen, do it. So we beefed up the helicopter. We made it a little bit stronger. It came from the factory with a rigid rotor head, and you really have to have a rigid rotor head to do this. It's got composite blades. We used the composite blade without changing them. And, um, then we did the modifications were in the main fuselage underneath that to beef it up so we could do this on a continual safe basis. And we had to change the center of gravity, we had to change the empty weight, we had to change a bunch of stuff in it. So it's not just the rotor system, it was a bunch of changes that we made to it that allow us to do this on a regular basis without me worrying that, that the rotor blade is going to come down and cut off the tail and fly it or do something where I would die. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner-pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. I've been flying for 35 years. I've got more than 18,000 hours of flying time in helicopters. I was probably looking for the next step or the next level in my life of, of, of uh, in helicopters. And it was a major challenge. No one had ever done what I wanted to do. Uh, when I was a child, I'd wake up in my bed in a dream and get on my magic carpet that was at the end of the bed. And I would stand on my magic carpet and I'd kneel down. I'd fly out of the window and uh, and I do and I had that reoccurring dream hundreds of times when I was a kid so uh, and then and then I'd fly around all night and I'd come back in just just before daybreak and land on the next to the bed and get out and jump in the bed just just in time for my mother was to knock on the door and say it's time for school <laughs> so I kept having that reoccurring dream all my life of having this magic carpet that I could go out and do whatever I wanted with I could hover I could zip around and just like you dream about in a magic carpet ride and Red Bull gave me this opportunity to make that dream come true so my my uh, my hope is that I can ex inspire young kids today that are that are young like I was then that have their own dreams and they can uh, and, uh, um, look uh, and, and make aeronautics uh, as crazy as I've made it in helicopters and I want them to come up with their own dreams, their own ideas, and to live out their dreams. The dreams are possible, just like my dream was. Okay, we are cleared for our approach. Have our Garmin GPS set up to fly the LPV. And look, here comes the glide path. And you're probably wondering how we can intercept a glide path when there's no ILS on the field. Well, hey, that's the beauty of WASP GPS. No ILS, no localizer, no problem. WASP gives us full vertical guidance, even without ground-based navigation. Okay, next you're probably wondering why there's spit all over your side of the windshield. When I first told the FAA that I wanted to take a helicopter and do aerobatics, they said, you're crazy. And I said, well, I probably am, but I still want to try it. 
And they said, well, it can't be done. No one's ever done it. We don't have a license for it. And I said, well, make one. How do I, what do I got to do to make this happen? So they said, well, you got to prove to us that you, you know, that, that you can, uh, um, uh, engineering can take an aircraft, a helicopter, and make it do loops and rolls without destroying it in flight and killing someone on the ground. So I spent about a, a, over a year taking this helicopter and modifying it and making sure that happened. So it was a long process. The FAA had to come up with a whole new license that didn't exist. Then I had to go out and prove to them that, I, that on paper that what I was going to do was going to be relatively safe to them. And then, then I had to go out and actually do the flight where they stood on the ground and watched me do loops and rolls and split S's and, and backflips before they believed me. <laughs> so after I did all that stuff, they finally gave me my license and they just gave me a salute and walked off. <laughs> the loop was the first aerobatic maneuver I taught myself how to do. And it was a, a real daunting task for me to m try and get a helicopter over, over upside down on its back. Uh, but after I'd done the modification of this helicopter, I, I felt pretty strong in my heart that, that we'd done all the work we could do and I could do it. And it was just a matter of me getting enough nerve to actually do it. And so I went out and I was practicing. I would I'd pull it up and I'd get, I'd go into the loop and I'd get about three quarters of the way around the loop and I'd chicken out and I'd roll out and I'd fly away, and try it again. I'd try it over and over and over again. And actually, over a period of about a month of trying it 50 or 60 times, I'd always go up to my chicken spot, I called it, and I'd roll out and 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 and, um, and not do it. One day I felt perfect and. The weather was good, and I and I just felt energized that day, and everything was going perfect. And I went up to my chicken spot, and I got right up there, and I said, "I'm going for it today." And I pulled it right on back, and, and went right around, and did the loop. And when I did, I was so excited in my in my heart that I said, "This is great! I can do this." So I, I did ten more right in a row, continually, because I, I didn't want to lose that feeling. I didn't want to lose how I did that. I wanted to make sure I remembered it, so I I just did ten in a row right then, and that. That got me over the hill once I got that done and I got into the rolls and the split S's and all that stuff after that.